State health planners first look at whether a community needs a new hospital or nursing home. Then they decide whether government money should help pay for building one. The planners go by a set of rules written down in this book called the State Health Plan. If a project complies with the rules, it receives a certificate of need. The certificate can be worth millions of dollars in government reimbursements for an owner's construction costs. The certificate, though valuable, is not for sale. It's against the law to sell one. However, some clever businessmen, including Governor Edwards, found ways to get around the law and the state health plan. The businessmen obtained certificates of need from the state, and they used them to make money for themselves. To obtain certificates of need, Edwards cooperated with his close friend, Ron Falgu. During Edwards' previous administration, Falgu worked for the state as a health official who reviewed applications for certificates of need. When Edwards went out of office after his second term, Falgu also left state government. Falgu went into business with a bright young lawyer, James Wiley. Wiley's knowledge of health care qualified him to teach at the Tulane School of Public Health and Tropical Medicine. Wiley and Falgu became partners in a metairie firm called Health Services Development Corporation. The firm's chief business was to obtain certificates of need for its clients. Here's how it worked. A client would set up stock in a new corporation, legal on paper, but with few or no real assets. For example, here we'll call it Company Z. The owner of Company Z would then come to Health Services Development Corporation, headed by Wiley and Falgu. Company Z would pay Health Services Development Corporation a fee to prepare an application for a certificate of need. Once obtained from the state, the certificate became Company Z's only known asset. Company Z would then arrange a deal to trade stock with a legitimate outside development chain like AMI, American Medical International, or HCA, Hospital Corporation of America. The owner of Company Z would then sell his share of the legitimate stock for cash. And the chain such as HCA would come into the community and with its certificate of need, build a hospital for profit. That was the sort of loophole in the law. There was a prohibition of selling the certificate itself, but there's no prohibition of selling the stock in the company that owns the certificate. State health records show Wiley and Falgu sometimes got certificates of need even when a client's project failed to meet the state health plan. Here in Gonzales, for example, the state gave Wiley and Falgu a certificate for construction of the proposed Gonzales Community Hospital. AMI acquired the certificate and renamed the project Riverview Medical Center. The problem with building a new hospital here in Gonzales is the community already has one. And East Ascension Parish General Hospital is only about half full. Records show the state rejected Wiley and Falgu's application at least twice before it finally approved it. The state also rejected East Ascension Parish Hospital's request to expand. In each instance, one reason listed for the rejection was that the project would give the community too many hospital beds. Yet Wiley and Falgu persisted. Finally, they won a certificate of need when the state changed the area's official population count to reflect 1987 projections. The new figure lowered the ratio of beds to people. Technically, it made the project fit the state health plan. How did Wiley and Falgu get the state to go along with the revised figures? Records show the state followed the example it set when it approved another hospital project for Baton Rouge. In both cases, the state revised its population count of a community to include future estimates. In both projects, Edwin Edwards was a partner. Baton Rouge community. I'm the one who gave birth to that idea, and I got half of the net proceeds from it. Over the past six months, Edwards has told different stories about his part in the deals. As the grand jury investigation deepened, Edwards was called to testify on November 30th. His public statements that day differed from what he told us two months earlier at the state capitol. I do not have any interest in Falgu's business, I never did. I did work for him as a lawyer and a consultant. Well, I had four different ventures that I succeeded with uh, as a partner, consultant, and a lawyer. Call me whatever you want to with Mr. Falgu. Well, in one instance, I got some stock in AMI, which I sold for about $400,000. In one instance, I got some stock from HCA, which I sold for about $400,000. In another instance, I got a cash fee from him for about $200,000. The total amount of what, I, what of what I got from the four of them is much closer to $2 million than $1 million. 
Consistently, Edwards has said he was out of office and Dave Treen was governor when all the transactions took place. However, Edwards was not without friends in the Treen administration. Among them, Health Secretary George Fisher and Jim Harris, who headed the office that reviewed applications for certificates of need. Both served in the previous Edwards administration. Treen says that for the most part, he let the office run itself. Uh, no, I was not aware that uh, sham type companies were being set up and getting certificates and then trading it off until very, very late in my administration. I did not know until after I was out of the governor's office that uh, Governor Edwards had any interest at any time in any of these applications. Critics say the political wheeling and dealing that went on behind former Governor Treen's back has helped make it more expensive for you to enter the hospital. Tomorrow, we'll follow the link from politics to your pocketbook. With photographer Brian Pucas, Taylor Henry, Channel 4 Eyewitness News.